Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the press coming to you live from Kaftan Television. The press, in case you're just joining us for the first time, is a morning program where we have an in-depth analysis of the major headlines on the national dailies. Normally, we start by the weather forecast, followed by the major headlines. And now this is a session where we have brought in a guest who had been a one-time NLC National Youth President. He's equally a public affairs analyst in person of Comrade Victor Epo. You're welcome, Comrade. Thank you very much. Good morning, Nigerians. Good morning, Good morning you. Huh? FM. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you here. It's a privilege to be seated quite close to Comrade <laughs> Victor Epo, who brought in a, a, a whole lot of renovations. Uh, into the youth wing of the Nigeria Labour Congress. Comrade, today we have been, let's go into the major discussion right away. We have been having issues when it comes to fear. Uh, the, the way Vanguard puts it is quite interesting. Vanguard says here, petrol price up third time in 60 days. You can imagine that. Right now we have uh, the, new, the newest price of petrol as at today which we don't know what is going to happen next by tomorrow by tomorrow it could be 2000 naira who knows but the latest hike is 1060 naira per liter and 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 already this has um, in, there is an instant increase in terms of uh, transportation because where i was paying 500 naira i paid 800 naira this morning for me to be dropped at my bus stop so how is your reaction to this is it that the government is insensitive towards the plight of nigerians is it that the government is just playing with the emotions of nigerians right away how do you react to this comrade thank Victor? you very much once again i want to thank you for bringing me up speed i like um, you said whether government is insensitive to the plight of Nigerians, this is a, a renewed hope agenda that um, the president, uh, the current administration promised Nigerians that they were going to give us a renewed hope, that they were going to bring up, uh, they will take the subsidy, use the money from the subsidy to the infrastructures and see what else to do. But as it stands now, we now have a refinery for God's sake. When we didn't have Dangote refinery, we were crying of the exchange rates, buying, having to import this fuel from outside the shores of the country. But now this fuel is just within our hands and we are getting this fuel every day. You have different prices. It's like both the fuel, the petroleum industry and that of the national grid, they are trying to see who, who collapsed fast mm. because the national grid have collapsed like four times in a week yeah and then now fuel price is now trying mm. to see how to compete so that we now say but at the end of it the less privileges in nigeria are the ones who are the receiving end exactly like you said where you used to take 500 naira you can no longer take it anymore this morning i saw on one of the headlines that the inmates now have now they've increased their feeding money to i think a thousand one fifty when minimum wage is still uh, 70,000. And the 70,000 yet, yeah, yet to be implemented. In a country where a family of one, not you, you, you can't even think of a family of four. A family of one cannot feed himself because by your analysis, if you are to pay a thousand naira from where you're living to where you're working, and some people will have to take bike, some people have to take two, three drops, how do you now manage with this current 70,000 naira minimum wage that is not even implemented? Mm. If government would even implement it, implement it, what of the other businesses whose profit cannot pay 70,000 minimum wage? And what they are doing, the Renewed Hope Agenda is busy chasing investors out of the country, busy killing um, businesses that cannot meet up with these excess uh, changes. But then, let us keep hope alive. Nigeria will work again. And uh, as it stands now, any increase in the pump price cannot be sustained by Nigerians again. 
it cannot be sustained whether we like it or not and i'm here i'm a comrade i'm here to just say it the way it is we are not here to pamper government we are here to just say that nigerians hey the increase in the pump price i don't know if the president listens to some of these things because uh i'll i'll beg to digress a little no problem uh, president bola ahmed tinibu said he doesn't have a cabal but as it stands i think his cabal is the people he has appointed as his aides because i'm not sure he listens to the plight of the people hmm. if he does as a father he will be able to know that these policies are not working you remove fuel subsidy and the government snowballed into what it is now and as as an administration uh, talk, you should be able to look at it and say no 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 no, these policies are not working but then the cabal he has employed will tell him ah your excellency this is working this is working this is working and you as a person you've not taken time to even see what is progress you check the decisions you've made check how far they've helped us and what next need to be improved upon but here we are just here everybody is just doing anything they like how can for god's sake you met fear at um was it 300 now yes and now it is a thousand sixty now percent to a thousand hundred and now the way fuel prices in nigeria now it is now a matter of uh, um environment if you're in lagos yes. you buy different from somebody who's in kaduna lagos is i think 1025 now yes and if you are in kaduna you buy from different person living in in uh, aquaibom how do you expect people to, to survive, survive with these current realities it is not working let us tell ourselves the truth uh, government it is not working again let us come back to the drawing board because the way they are they are leading us now is just like with due respect to to whosoever the way this government is carrying us is as though a driver who said he knows how to drive but he mm. drives automatic car mm. and now they just ask you can you drive you say yes and when you get into the vehicle you discover this is a manual car mm. and as a driver you know that you can actually drive but if you don't want to kill yourself you should be able to step down of the vehicle and tell them eh, eh, the car i thought i could drive is uh, an automatic vehicle and this one is ma manual for god's sake so that is it that you you burn the clutch of the car or you kill yourself mm. so at this point in time that we are now i think these policies are not working thank you very much oh my god comrade victor you have said a lot but uh, let's uh, go down memory lane. You know, before, during the negotiation process of the yet to be implemented 70,000 Naira, the agreement the federal government entered with the NLC was that for, because NLC actually at a point, they started with 600, yeah. 600, I think 650 or something. 650. So at a point, NLC said they were not going to move from 250,000 Naira for minimum wage then they got into agreements they had to bargain and then one of the agreements entered i'm a labor correspondent was that for nlc to accept the 70 the present yet to be implemented 70 thousand naira was if nlc must go for that fear must be i think 800 and something okay. as a den then if nlc keep on insisting on that two hundred and fifty thousand naira minimum wage then fuel price was meant to be i think one five one thousand five hundred five hundred so nlc considering or being patriotic they now put a whole lot of things in uh, 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 maybe probably some of their members standing a chance of uh, being uh, retrenched and all that nlc had to settle for seventy thousand naira, it, I think it wasn't up to a month when the federal government increased, started with the increment, and today we are having the way it, it is going. Very soon we'll get to that one thousand five hundred. Do you think this is a betrayal to the <coughs> labor unions? You see, talking about the labor union, you see, 
there is there is a clear difference. I want Nigerians to hear this. There is a clear difference between the labor movement and the labor union. Yes. What NLC did was a labor movement. Okay. Even within the labor movement, we had a lot of people betraying Congress. Even within the labor movement. Mm. For instance, TUC at some point will want to back out. This issue, government knew they were going to bring us this way. That was why Obasan just pleaded the labor center. Mm. Because they discovered the labor center was beginning to get too powerful, according to them. Mm. We now have NLC and TUC. NLC will agree, TUC will disagree. We'll disagree. NLC might agree, TUC, TUC will, will disagree. Yes. But then. So divide and rule game. Good. The issue of uh, agreeing to a certain price because you will not get this. Yes. The leadership of the Nigeria Labour Congress would have known better. Mm. They should have known that this government, have you ever, thank God you're a Labour co correspondent, have you ever seen a negotiation that government will concede until 12 midnight mm. that they will say tomorrow is strike or they will now call for fire brigade. Uh, bri bri bri. Okay, well, let us meet today. Mm. And most of the times, the members would have been somewhere trying to pick it. Before you know it, even you trying to pick it, you'll be at where you're, you're, pick, uh, where you're picketing. They would have called off strike even with, without you knowing. Mm. Government have constantly betrayed the working populace. Government have constantly betrayed Nigerians. If you call that of the agreement with NLC betrayer, what do you now call the agreement hmm. that this government gave us before we voted them into power? Sorry, can I pick this call? Please, go ahead. Because this is an interesting, I know we are going to have calls. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning, madam. Your name and where you are calling from? Okay, how is Lagos today? Not bad, not bad. Okay, go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, you see, the you have given a good example, you have said so. Thank you. There are a driver to drive a vehicle, and you want to get yes. And you know, in fact, the vehicle, and I discovered that the vehicle is either abandoned or automatic. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to go there. 
<laughs> okay, sir, so can you please make it short so that you can give room to another caller? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Your name and where you are calling from, please? I'm calling from Papa. Oh, hi, Spot Harcourt. Okay. Your name? Your name, please. My name is Ade. Ade? Yes. Okay, please, you have few seconds. Go ahead with your submission. Okay. I just want to know that the they said that they give a double tree crude oil for Nera. So that all those things is come down. They said they have the GST. What they have this money, they said they have a the green tea for it. What was the issue? You know that this was not our problem for this country. Eh? Every time this one guy is doing this way, and they said they cannot call those people now. He called himself for Minister of Power, eh, Minister of eh, Petroleum. He cannot talk to those people. How this is making a cut, not over the one of them. Thank you, thank you, so that you give the opportunity for other callers. Thank you. So, Comrade Victor, we we're yeah. talking about the the betrayal. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the betrayal is that <coughs> government just know that Nigerians will not do anything. Mm, so they're taking Nigerians for granted. They know you will not do anything. The highest thing you can do is to come out and shout. Mm. You protest today. Probably you get arrested. Yes. You must be arrested. That mm. one is not mm. is, is not under probability. Mm. <clears throat> and the policeman who is coming to arrest you there, he's living on loan. Mm. He's living on loan. Mm. His children cannot go to school. That's the irony. He doesn't have if he dies today. The police will not allow him, his wife, to last three days if he was living in the barracks. They would have chased him away mm. so now nigerians it is high time we now know that uh, you see we know we are a religious country we mm. keep on praying ah it is well god will help us but mm. then let me tell us something dango take came out and told us that uh that nigeria sell the cheapest fuel that in saudi arabia they sell fuel at about two thousand uh, mm. when you calculate mm. now my question to him is what is the minimum wage in saudi arabia exactly because nigeria pays the least if what we pay here the seventy thousand is not to i think it's 30 or 40 dollars 40 yeah i think it's not 40 dollars 40 dollars if you are working in the u.s they pay you 14 dollars per hour and you work for eight hours you work for eight hours calculate it mm. If you work for two days, you have almost two hundred dollars, which is enough to. So if I am being paid, uh, let's say five hundred thousand naira as minimum wage, mm. if you bring fuel to two thousand five hundred, you can afford. I can to. afford it with the current realities on ground. Do you know that the minimum wage cannot buy a tank of fuel? That it is can't. how bad it is. I can't. The national minimum wage in Nigeria today cannot buy full tank of fuel. 
which means now my tank takes uh, 70 liters the 70 liters is about 84 85,000 and now this 84,000 will take me one week at most one week and two days so how will I now how will I now survive with 70,000 minimum wage so that means mm. if I collect my 70,000 I'll just buy one tank of oil and that's all but they will tell you they will bring CNG buses have you heard have you seen recently in Enugu the CNG station mm. bust oh. and almost killed people some of these policies we bring we are not ready for it clearly mm. we don't do we just listen to something maybe oh america is doing it oh we can do it here have you checked our environment mm. have you checked the topography of where we are mm. can it work can it work do we have a system where the people you appointed into government will not sabotage you mm. the president today is the minister of petroleum and yet we have a private company that fix fuel price for nigeria NMPC is a, is a limited. So now, if government, we have the minist Ministry of uh, Petroleum, and yet a private company keep on fixing a price of what they do not have. Hmm. NMPC don't produce fuel. They are just a middleman. And you are the one fixing the price. If it's Dangote telling us today that he's going to sell this fuel, so we will not bother because it's a private business. But why is it the same government who is supposed to be taking care of us and betraying us? This is pure betrayal. So please, uh, as bad as this will sound, we will continue, continue hoping. And the renewed hope agenda sometime. He said that uh, if he didn't do well, we should kick him out. And somebody again went to the villa to see the president came out and said, if Tinibu fails, hold me responsible. And last week, mm. he came out and said he has been betrayed. Now, who will he now hold responsible? <laughs> Asari Dokubo. Hmm. Okay, comrade, thank you very much. So you've outlined a very, <laughs> a rather bleak picture of the economic of position, especially as concerns petrol and um, fuel prices and um, distribution and all that. But so far, I've noticed that you seem to have um, put all the uh, marker on Tinubu the, as a president. I agree, the buck should stop on his table. But let's look at what the um, what was the policy behind the removal of fuel subsidy, which was the idea was to get it closer to the people now and not be in the hands of those few uh, those few individuals, which created an inequality in the Nigerian system. So we had super rich Nigerians, then dirt poor, vulnerable people, you know, and all that. So it was kind of a way to bridge the gap. What I would like to ask you is, why don't we not beam our searchlight onto the regional heads, onto the state governors? Because all that money was taken away from those who are receiving this fuel subsidy mm -hmm. and handed over to them. Mm -hmm. How come, you know, I'd like you, you to, you know, the NLC also beam your searchlight there. For instance, a governor who formerly was collecting maybe eight billion, all right, uh, is now collecting twenty-five billion. So at the same time, you're complaining fuel has increased from three hundred to one thousand. Look at the bumper increase in revenue from eight billion to twenty-five. That's like four times, isn't it? How come there is nothing on ground, state to blessed state, to show for this, and nobody is calling for the heads of these governors? So I think they should also be, have a blame and they also, beam, the searchlight should be beamed on them. What do you think about that? Thank you very much. Um, it's, a good, it's a good one. Madam, the subsidy remover was, you remember we had, we did a program with uh, Action Aid one time, they called Gender Responsive Public Service Delivery. Yes. <clears throat> the public service in Nigeria should be gender responsive. What it means is everybody should have a fair share. We said we're going to remove subsidy so that we use the money from subsidy to build our schools, 
that are dilapidating, build our hospitals and do things. Now, the subsidy was removed. You now remove subsidy and refuse to remove the corruption in subsidy. Mm. You collected this money from few individuals and now share it to politicians. Mm. The governors will collect this money and tell you his revenue is increasing. His, this money is not, fuel, is, is, is not to use to alleviate fuel. The money they are giving to governors is to use to build infrastructures. That is why they are crying today that there is local government autonomy. Exactly. Everybody is crying that, oh, how can local government do this? How can local government do that? They are all crying. Why? Because this money now is going to the least person. The governors, to a large extent, if the president will set the pace, the governors will fall in line. Hmm. The governors don't have any right whatsoever to come. Though um, most of them are in the Federal Executive Council, some hmm. don't even come. Hmm. Because the Federal Executive Council in Nigeria is known as though it is a uh, it is a party uh, meeting mm. because <laughs> if you're if you are not in mm. uh, in, in the mm. ruling party, party when they call for federal executive council you now mm. you, you you say eh, eh, the people who voted me uh, are not in abuja eh, what am i coming <laughs> to be in abuja so <laughs> nigeria we've gone to that point but then Nigerians should be able to hold everybody accountable. Yes, that's what I would like, would like you to say. Should be held accountable. Absolutely. The local government chairman should, should be, be held, held accountable. Absolutely. Everybody and let it be there is we should do follow the money. Let us know how much a state governor collects. Yes. Let us know what he has done with it. Exactly. And we always cry. There is no need for our senators, House of Rep members to be in Abuja. They mm. should go back to their constituencies. So that when this money is given to them, let the president also be bold enough to tell Nigerians, I have given Lagbaja one yes. million. The money is for this and that. The people in that community, please follow your money. Mm. If you do that, we will have a pragmatic government absolutely if you do that you have a government where the citizens mm -hmm. will follow this money before i i i i go the vice president wanted to go for a conference mm -hmm. to represent a country mm. and he had an accident Somewhere. private jet yes and just because something hit the glass of the vice president's jet mm. that meeting was aborted mm. madam this is a responsibility you should take our government officials don't see it as a responsibility they see it as though they are doing us a favor. In it is only in Nigeria where mm. we serve people we voted into office mm. instead of the other way around. Mm. If not, government said they want to cut cost of governance, they want to do this, and yet you are killing us every day. This fuel is the only thing Nigerians can benefit directly. If you bring fuel to is all this heat. If you bring fuel to 200 naira today, Things tomorrow will morning, drastically, everything will go down, whether you like it or not. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still, like I said, I will not move away from my, my point. Fuel can be brought to 200 naira per litre in any of the states today. Oh yes, it can be. Sure. Because if you were collecting um, 8 billion... Today you're collecting 25 billion. What stops every governor from subsidizing fuel? It is because in which case the, the subsidy will, will you know be direct. So they because can it will it at the state level. At level. You understand? It will now be direct and not into individuals' pockets. Why are they not doing so? And if they are not, why are they not at least implementing the 70,000 naira minimum wage? Why not? And Nigerian citizens are, are very complacent. 
Oh, you, you know, calling Tinubu, Tinubu. I, I agree, the box starts and is stable. And the reason why I'm this worried is because, like you said, that um, local government autonomy is going to be set into place. Yeah. Yeah. If you cannot call your governor to order, is it the local government chairman you're going to? Huge sums are going to come in now to the local governments. Sure, exactly. We know that of states, maybe 20, 20 something billion. Then at least hundreds of millions will come into your local government. Some receive us uh, like 400 For, billion now. Uh, in a year, you know. Now. And then now when your local mean? government One chairman collects it, he sits down in one hotel in the in the uh, state capital he chops the money mm -hmm. you understand and you'll be sitting there crying tenable tenable when your problem is staring you in the face so this is what i want to you know nigerians to please be aware of i agree tinubu is the president i agree tinubu is the person who announced fuel subsidy has gone mm -hmm. now that money was channeled to some person in charge of you hold him responsible at least at least, I want to ask, you know, a, a viewer now, has there been any new school, a beautiful new school <laughs> built in any of the state capitals or local governments in the past at least one and a half years? Are there good roads? Uh, is there anything that shows that astronomical increase in, in revenue? Because in, if you're looking at the increase in revenue, it's not incomparable to the increase in fuel prices if you, you are this, sincere. Yeah. If it was 300 Naira and it's now 900 Naira, I mean, that's like three times, you know, three times the price. But I can tell you, let me look, think of anything on me now. Uh, maybe, uh, what can I think of? Okay, let me think of something that I eat or drink. A bottle, bottled water went like 50 times the price increase. Why wouldn't you pay people this minimum wage? You understand so we really have to hold our governors we my, my bottom line is please let's hold our governors let's hold our local government chairman accountable say what you're using this money for and let this money reflect on us before we travel all the way to the federal government because you are first line charge that's why this money is being brought closer to you to bring it closer to the people mm. let the people feel the impact of this money yeah thank you sorry ah. let me let me let me react uh, yes. to that before we go the problem we are having is <laughs> Nigerians, we are we are problems. Absolutely. The reason is this. Recently, it is now making headlines uh, that a governor, Governor Fubara, is paying eighty five thousand. It is now a news. Yeah, it's big news. It's I like it's big begin news. To wonder why should it be a headline that you are taking your civil responsibility? You got up in the morning, you brush your teeth, it's now a news. Hmm. Like you, 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 you asked what they they are using the big money to do. They are building new government houses. Yes, <laughs> new governors. Bulletproof jeeps. If you go to Akwaibom, the, the 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 governor is even a pastor. He's building a Janjatic uh, governor's lodge with people's money, and the place you're building this big governor's lodge. We don't have hospitals. If you enter our primary health centers, you will see why our pregnant women need help. So please, uh, Mama, we'll keep on, time Time will fail us to, to do this. Honestly. But we'll keep on doing it. Yes. Yeah, we'll keep we, on advocating we, we. until he gets to who needs to hear it. Absolutely. Yes, uh, at this point, we <laughs> have to. I wish we still have time. I wish we still have enough time. Uh, but you know, everything that has a beginning must have an end. So, Comrade Victor, yeah. can you say your final uh, words of encouragement and probably advice to the government on the situation? uh my this they, sh they should pay for it anyway but <laughs> my my final word should be that <coughs> nigeria is a country who will nigeria will work again mm -hmm. nigeria will work again it's just that we need to put the right persons in place like the the new shakeup in government would have gone across since everybody we know that clearly it's not working. We should have done it. Let everybody go. Bring new persons. But like I said, let's keep on hoping. 
that Nigeria will work again. Thank you very much. So very smartly, Mickey. <laughs> okay. Say, well, bye. my final take is that Nigeria is for all of us. Nigeria is not for the politicians, not for the governors, not for the local government chairman. It's for you and I. We have to watch them carefully. We have to hold them to account. That's our responsibility. Let's do so. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. That's how far we can go for today. We can't, uh, we don't have enough time to pick most of your calls. But you know, matters arising tonight probably is going to address some of these issues. I want to use this opportunity to appreciate the men and women working behind the scene. I want to appreciate our producer, Ruben Okala. I want to appreciate you out there that made this program this lively. Thank you for having us today. My name is Ikaite Igbo. Imagine, like we say in Kaftan TV, imagine a beautiful world. Bye for now.